Hi everyone, here at MTN we have a great pleasure, 30th annual Lee's McRae Summer Theater. We talk about 30 years to put on performances. That's an absolutely phenomenal achievement right there up in Banner North Carolina, beautiful college there, Lee's McRae College, and they have a fantastic summer theater here. And we're joined today, Bob Haas, who's actually from the... I am. Great to see you. Michael Jones, who's King Arthur and Spam a lot. David Craven, Sir Galahad, Dr. Mike Hanna, nice to see you. Thanks for being here with us again today. And it's going to be a fantastic show. It's three great shows, uh, June 29th through July the 6th. That's Kiss Me Kate, followed by July 16th through July 20th is going to be um, uh, a grand night for singing. And then August 6th through August the 10th is going to be Spamalot. And Spamalot is really based upon um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which was a cult uh, just phenomenon back in, it started in 1975 and people continue to watch it for years and years. It was a, bi a big English comedy uh, film. Uh, John Cleese became famous for that, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Michael, you're going to play the big part of King Arthur? King Arthur, yeah, which is great. Uh, it's such a, uh, it's going to be a wonderful role. It's going to be a great, great time, a lot of fun. Uh, Arthur is basically um, just the character searching for like the meaning of life, looking for the Holy Grail with his Knights of the Round Table helping him along and his sidekick Patsy, which he kind of forgets about a lot of times. <laughs> so, and, um, and then the Lady of the Lake, who is Guinevere at the end, and um, who he eventually they do marry. Um, they, they, they get together and they find the Grail and everything is okay, you yeah. know. But it's a great humor, a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. If, even though you, if you might not be a Monty Python fan, um, I think you come out and see it. You'll laugh, have good, a, a good night, and a lot of great singing and a lot of great humor. And all the humor bounces around me. I'm the straight character, kind of like, oh, yeah, so here we go, here we go. You know, so it's yeah. kind of fun, yeah. But, you know, I, that movie com came out in 75, and I remember seeing it in high school and um <laughs> so uh, for a lot of the folks out there who wouldn't necessarily consider themselves musical theater fans they know monty python oh, yeah. i think anybody who's spent any time on a college campus or any time in a late night movie before video kids you know they would know monty python and the holy grail so they will enjoy this show yeah. I come on out come on yeah. see well, the show. show makes fun of other it does it's self-referential so it makes yeah. fun of uh, <coughs> a lot of the conventions of musical comedy so you can just you have it all if you've yeah. seen you a musical play yeah. you will yeah. know mm -hmm. something about the show because yeah. it's making fun of other musicals you've seen yeah. yeah and bob you're patsy so you're the servant I'm patsy that is not a gender specific name that's yeah. more then no, it's my, my place in life is Patsy, yeah. So. And you had a lot of work with the coconut shells and everything, don't yes, you? Yes, I yeah. do, yeah. Build up my forearms. Oh. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to that, you know, it's the workout. And uh, David, Sir Galahad, so you actually start out um, as Galahad. What, what is it, Dennis? It's Dennis. 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 And then yes. what happens is that is King Arthur is supposedly Calls the Lady of the Lakes yes. that from uh, Excalibur, and then you don't go along with that because you think they need to be, he needs to be elected. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so like, like the, the kings don't, they don't vote for kings, you know. And I, t I explain to him <laughs> what happens. And then the lady of the lake, he thinks I'm crazy. And then she appears, and then he turns into Galahad, you know. Yeah. And then um, his mother um, thinks, you know, she doesn't want him anywhere near the lady of the lake. And then all of a sudden, it's, you know, magically, poof, there he is, you know. And then he starts speaking very proper as a knight. <laughs> yeah. So she turns you into a sir. Yeah. She does. Sir. She turns me into a knight. It's yeah. a lovely mm. moment. And what do you. Oh, no, go ahead. What do you enjoy about, about being Sir Galahad? I think I enjoy the, the fun it takes on um, making fun. It, to me, it makes fun of Phantom of the Opera because I have um, the song that goes like this that just never ends. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps having key changes mm -hmm. and keeps going with the Lady of the Lake. Yeah. And I think it's just it's nice to be in a musical that you can finally spoof other musicals wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, to, it was... Very successful, wasn't it, Dr. Mike? I mean, you're talking mm -hmm. three Tony Awards, was nominated yeah. for 14, 1,500 performances, you know, in total. Uh, Two million people saw it, over $175 million of ticket sales. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a phenomenal. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like we said, it's, it's a, mu a movie that everybody knows. People know the Monty Python humor, and they know that, as it says, this has been lovingly ripped off from the movie uh, by the people who did the movie. So, you know it's going to be fun. Just kind of wacky, isn't it? I mean, it's really oh, yeah. the humor is is just nonstop. I mean, it's just <laughs> nonstop. You will laugh nonstop. I mean, it's it's great. It's it has something for everyone. You know. Yeah, I know one of the parts in the movie that everybody used to always talk about was the type. Was it the Black Knight? The Black Knight. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, basically, Arthur um, wants to. He he needs. He's on the quest for the Holy Grail. He needs to pass, 
and the Black Knight does not let him pass, so we get into a sword fight, and he you know, chops, sir, chop, you know, he chops one arm off, and the Black Knight still, you know, keeps persisting. <laughs> he chops another one off. He keep, still keeps persisting. And Arthur says, "I'm not going to say it on air, but you know, he says a line that it's just, it, you know, <laughs> very silly." I'm like, "Let's go. I, I, the fight is mine, and let's move on." You know, but he keeps going on and on and on. And then eventually his legs, he loses his legs. And then Patsy and I, we, we move on for, you know, to keep moving for the, the quest, for yeah. the grail. But Black Knight is perhaps overly optimistic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to give him that. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, he is. Things right. have to end. Yeah, so. and they have to end. And he, and he says, always look on the bright side of life, which is Patsy, you know, Patsy sings at the top of, act, oh. around the top of act two, yeah. and, um, which is very funny. So, but it, he, he just does not want to give up, you yeah. know. That was a huge song, wasn't it? Always look on the bright side of life. Yeah, from, mm -hmm. uh, but that was from uh, another movie, actually, wasn't it? Uh, now for something completely different, or one yeah. of the, the meaning of life was what it was from, I think. Yeah, so they they rob from themselves. Yeah, it's their material. They yeah, can yeah. do whatever they want to do yeah. with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you can rob from yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You can yeah. rob from other stuff too, as long as it's good. Yeah. So, <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail, famous for the comedy. Spam a lot, famous for the comedy. But then you've got the music added in. So tell us about what the music, what it's like, what type of songs and everything. Uh, well, for Arthur, it, you know, it's, it's basically songs about him being king. Um, and then there's one song um, where he's kind of in the, the top of Act Two. His knights have have you know fled. He's all alone. He's trying to you know doesn't do anything. He's really dejected. So Patsy sings you know you know always look on the bright side of life. And Arthur doesn't really buy into it. And then he buys into it. And then they keep moving on. And then he's just um, he does um, he doesn't know what to do anymore. So he sings. He's really dejected because, you know, he, th now he's have to put on a Broadway show and he doesn't know how because Broadway's a thousand years in the future mm -hmm. and he doesn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> so, he's, he's, uh, so he's really depressed. So he sings the song that he's all alone, but he's really not because Patsy has been with him the whole time. And then the Lady of the Lake comes out and says, you know, you, you're not alone. I'm here with you. I'm like, oh, I'm wonderful. But Patsy's been with me all the time. And I'm like, oh, yes, but Patsy's family. You know, he's, been, you know, I don't look at him like that. So... And then, but, um, and the, so the songs are very, um, it's just, you know, for him, it's, I think it's, uh, you know, very meaningful and uh, very true. He plays the truth. He's very, that very straight character and um, just searching, always searching and looking. And then when, once he finds the grail, um, he's very, you know, he's very satisfied and, you know, he, he accomplishes what he needs to accomplish. But along the way, it's just, it's, it tells a great story. Yeah. about you know you know for him um, the lady of the lake she, she has the the amazing song she's the powerhouse for you know for the show uh, my, that's my opinion of that so yeah. and uh, yeah. she gets to sing whatever happened to my part yeah really? because she's, she's not she, she goes off stage and she's finally back on stage and and uh, she, so she really brings that great humor to so her. you know you know they're making fun of musicals when yes. the diva in the show sings about you know the fact that she isn't getting as big a part as she was contracted to do so call my agent and I'm yeah. getting out of here and you know. but she gets a bigger part in this yeah. show than she does in the actual Arthur yeah. legend mm -hmm. so she has nothing to complain about yeah. I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's really a quest for the Holy Grail throughout the, yes. throughout the whole it's, time yeah, it's a quest for the Holy Grail throughout the, the entire time it's yeah. Monty Python's take on mm -hmm. the quest yeah. for the Holy Grail <laughs> yeah. which is going to be very warped as, yeah. as it is with anything definitely, Monty yeah. Python touched definitely 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 and, and David what songs do you enjoy singing there well, I just have the one song, yeah. so I'm totally in love with it, but I think it's a great, I mean, there are a lot of upbeat songs in the show as well. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of comedy songs. It, the whole show keeps moving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he mm -hmm. is, Arthur is the straight man of the show, yeah. and the rest of us are the insanity that ensues. Yeah. <laughs> Because he finally meets, he gets all his knights together, and he's ready to go, and they go to Camelot, which is like Las Vegas. Yeah. You know, and he says what you know. And he's the one line that he says to his knights: "Remember, gentlemen, what ha what happens in Camelot stays in Camelot." <laughs> so, and they go, and, and this, they you know, they get to before they leave for that their big quest and stuff like that. So they get one night of like a celebration together, but in a weird warped way because um, yeah, we sing we're knights of the round table yeah. and so it's it's, <laughs> it's a play on words which is great and spam a lot opens up and i like the first scene too where they're telling sort of a history of medieval england and then but they end up in mm -hmm. finland and yes yeah. and then <laughs> yeah 
and then there's, and then the, the narrator of the comes out and says, "No, I meant England." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, they're, and then they're all dejected and they leave. And then <laughs> and then Patsy and I come out, and there we are for that quest. Yeah. And um, and we you know and that and that's where it all begins. So yeah. it's it's wonderful. So fantastic story. And there's a little twist at the end where you end up finding the Holy Grail. We do. At the end. We yeah. do. We um we find the Grail in the audience, yeah. which is great. Um, and the Grail will be. Um, somewhere in the audience and because there's it's not what you think it's going to be it's, yeah <laughs> what's yeah right exactly and then that person you know we bring that person up on the stage that has found the grail for for us basically because yeah. we, we don't think we're going to find it but and the lady of the lake keeps pushing us that way and then god keeps pushing us that way and tell and gives us clues and stuff like that but and then eventually we do find it yes yeah. so it's just great so michael when you look at the three t we were talking about kiss me kate a grand night for singing and spam a lot mm -hmm. And they're all such diversity, but tell us what you really like the best. What makes this one special of the three? Um, for Spam, I think it's just, it, for me, it's just um, the pure enjoyment, the humor of it, the comedy. Just it's, it's a feel good show. You might, like I said before, you might not be a Monty, Monty Python fan, but when you leave, it's, 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 it will leave you. Um, for an audience to come in, it, uh, it's pure entertainment for them. It's an evening that you can just come to the theater, enjoy the show, don't have to think about anything, and just kind of laugh. Yeah. And that's what sometimes we forget. You know, when audiences come to the theater, it's they want to leave their 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 daily work, their problems aside, and come to the theater and just enjoy the, the actual show. So that's why I, I think it's going to be a great show. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's just going to be a, a silly night. And I think they're going to have a, a blast with it. I really do. It's very yeah. good for people, even health-wise, to go there and just have yes. a, a nice. Oh night yeah, because it, I mean the stress of life it just gets yeah. in the way. And when you come to the theater, that's that's why that's why we we perform that we do. We lo we love telling a story. We love making people laugh, and we love you know you know putting a smile on people on the audience's faces. Yeah. yeah so definitely. And Bob, you're from here in Boone originally. Now you're a professor, but. Um, but uh, so you grew up here and went to Watauga High School? I did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you really enjoy being, being I, here? I come up just about every summer. This is my 19th season uh, with Lise McRae Summer Theater. So uh, it's a nice way to get away from uh, the heat of the triad yeah, during the <laughs> summer because it gets hot down the mountain. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad to be up here. I'm happy to be up here. I'm ecstatic to be up here and uh, really excited about Spam a lot because it's, uh, it's non-traditional. Uh, we've done a lot of traditional and just classical musical theater at Lee's McCray, which is really fun, and a lot of it is tongue-in-cheek as well, but there's a cutting-edge quality to Spam a lot. I think uh, people will really enjoy. Uh, I hope they do. Yeah, cause that makes it, it's just something different that hasn't been done before here. So, Michael and Bob, you're going to sing a song for us now, yeah. I'm All yep. Alone, and tell us what the, the idea in the, in the musical, when does this come along and, and what's the idea of this song? And this, uh, this, this basically comes along when um, Arthur has given up on everything, he, um, he doesn't know how to put on a Broadway show, his nights have left him, he's very dejected, very depressed, and, um, and he just... He, he just can't do it anymore. And so he's, 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 he's just feeling, you know, very um, given, he's given up hope. And then he, he sings, I'm so alone. But actually, um, Patsy is right next to him and, um, and it makes it very, very humorous yeah. um, song. And then the audience that will absolutely, I think, enjoy and love, you know, so. He can always count on you, can he? It's got some yeah. good business, yeah. yeah it's got some, yeah. some fun stuff in it, yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be great. Could you mind singing that for no, us? No, no. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. All right. Okay. That'd be great. Thanks. Thanks. So let me get this straight. I'm a king without a single knight to command. There's nobody. I'm absolutely alone. I'm all alone. All by myself There is no one here beside me I'm all alone Quite all alone No one to comfort me or guide me Why is there no one here with me On the long and winding road Lift my heavy load. 
If there was someone here with me, how happy I would be. But I'm alone, so all alone, just by myself I'm all alone, I'm all alone. He's all alone, all by myself, except for me, I cannot face it, he cannot face it, I'm all alone, though I am here, so all alone, so very near, no one to share my sorrow, you know it seems quite clear to me, because I'm working class, I am just the horse's ass. He sails me down the river, so what am I, chopped liver? But I'm alone. Oh no, you're not. I'm so all alone. I'm here, yes, not. Just by myself, I'm all alone. He's all alone. I'm all alone. All by himself. All by myself. There is no one here beside him. He's all alone. So all alone. Apart from us. No one to comfort him or guide him. Each one of us is all alone. So what are we to do in order to get through? We must be lonely side by side. It's a perfect way to We're all alone. We're all alone. Yes, all alone. So all alone. Each by ourselves, we're all alone. I tell you, great singing there. Spam a lot. Michael and Bob, that was tremendous. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I tell you, really enjoyed it. You guys stay together all the time throughout. You're the, all the sidekick. The, yes, the unappreciated <laughs> sidekick. <laughs> so you guys really enjoy it. it. must be a lot of fun doing that show. Oh, oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. When, you, be, when yeah. you look back to, what, 1975 with uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and, you know, it was such a cult thing, wasn't it? I mean, it was yeah, really oh, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember I, going to see it at like a late night movie. Yeah. So a lot of people have too. Yeah. Before we had video. Yeah. He so was, yes. Yeah. So I don't know if he was. <laughs> 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 but, it, but it, yeah, really, really great show there. I'm really looking forward to that. And it's August 6th through the 10th. And um, before that, July 16th through July 20th, a grand night for singing. And you talk about a difference. And that's the beauty of this 30th annual uh, Lee's McCray Summer Theater. And there's such a diversity here, isn't it, Dr. Mike? Oh, yeah. There is. Um, we know, you know, Spam a Lot is a new show, fairly new, at least compared to the others. And it appeals to people who like the Monty Python style of humor. And then, of course, Grand Night for Singing is Rodgers and Hammerstein, which is going to sell no matter what you do because it's the music everybody knows. And then Kiss Me Kate's the, the beginning, and that's the old school musical, revived a little bit in 99, but gives you a nice wide range of things. Yeah. So you guys are in it. And David, you're actually a visiting professor at least. I am. Tell us about that. Uh, it's my first year there. I've done three years of summer theater prior to teaching this year, so I knew some of the students, and the students are what drew me to wanting to come to teach at Lees McRae. Yeah. They're, we have wonderful students who yeah. have a great energy and desire to learn. And there's one of the former wonderful students right there, isn't it? She, oh, yeah. she wasn't a student when I was there. <laughs> she, she was one of mine, though. I can claim her for that. Yeah. So, Jennifer, you graduated, what, 2002? I did, 2002, and yes. So you've been enjoying, you enjoyed, since then, you learned a lot while you were at Leaves McCray? I learned a ton. They were very educational. They were very driven, dedicated. It's a very good, great school, small, a, a small school, so that helped us get the attention that we actually needed, I think, from a one-on-one -on -one student to teacher re ratio. So mm -hmm. I loved it, and it's a beautiful campus. Oh, yeah. So. Must be a thrill, what, 12 years later to be coming back and being <laughs> in the show. So. It is a thrill. This is actually uh I think it's my third season working Lee's McRae Summer Theater as well. However, I've only either performed or choreographed one show of the season. And this year I'm actually in two. So 
it'll be a little bit of a difference. Yeah. So a grand night for singing, what, Rodgers and Hammerstein. And it's amazing how much they wrote, isn't it? Because oh, yes. we really don't realize that. Tell there, us there are a lot of shows that are not, you know, some are more popular than others, The Sound of Music, South Pacific, King and I. But there are a lot of shows that are not done as much. And that's just got beautiful music in it. And then this show gives you a little bit of everything. What was it, 1993 it was originally mm -hmm. on Broadway? And, uh, and some Tony Awards and everything. I think so, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, so. Tell us, uh, that Jennifer, the the different musicals that all these songs come from. Oh, there's so many. We have we have like Mike said that we have Sound of Music, which are these are some of the well better known ones. Sound of Music. Oh, King and I. Carousel. Carousel is a very well known one. Um, State Fair may be a very well known one, known one. However, some of the songs they double up and they put in multiple shows, yeah. which I actually found out today. And Oklahoma, <laughs> which Kiss Me Kate was really kind of in the same genre, really, as Oklahoma, wasn't right. it? So this is uh, Roger Hammerstein's version of that yeah. type of story was Oklahoma. Oklahoma set the standard for, for shows from then on. You had, to, you had to write it like Oklahoma had been written. Nice integrated musical. Yeah. So. The Sound of Music, uh, I think it's from there mm -hmm. also, which yeah. I, I actually went and saw that at least with Grace Summer Theater uh, when you guys performed that. Was it two, year, was it two, yeah, two years? Was it two years ago? Two years ago. It was a fantastic show. Yeah, it was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's good to have, uh, that's always beautiful songs and everything there. Michael, what do you, what do you sing in the... In the uh, Grand, Grand Night? Yeah, Grand Night. I, I do a, just um, different pieces here and there. I know Maria uh, is one of those pieces. I sing... Um, um, a little bit of, uh, I think, uh, just a, 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 an array of different pieces yeah. throughout. So we're kind of spread throughout the different things. and uh, But I'm very excited about it, and I think it's going to be great. It's yeah. wonderful music. It's, it's, it's Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. And it's something that the, it's going to be it's a, a definitely a grand night for, yeah. for, for them to remember. Yeah, the fun thing about a musical review is they'll take the show from the original context for example, he says, Maria, well, that's usually sung by Mother Superior and the nuns. And yet in a show like this, a man may sing it. Yeah. When a woman sang it originally, or it may have been a, a, a solo f originally, and now it's made into a big choral number. The song that, that Jennifer sang, it might as well be spring, may as well be spring, is usually a much slower song. But in this version, it moves 90 miles an hour. They just they make new arrangements and, and give you a, a new interpretation of those old songs. And Jennifer, you were telling me before that originally it had been, what, five cast members that had, had shared all these songs, right. whereas now you have about 17. So We are. We, ha we have a very passionate, talented 17-person cast. And like Michael was saying, some of us may have actual solos that may be a little bit harder to break down. But then there's a song called The Stepsisters Lament, which is originally from Cinderella. And we're talking about the steps, the two stepsisters will sing why would a fellow want a girl like Cinderella. But now all the women are kind of going to gang up on one other lady cast member. So it's going to be kind of fun because we get to add our quirks and, and however our personalities are. And there's going to be maybe six of us ganging up on one poor little innocent girl. <laughs> so that's another way that this show changes a lot from its original text. Yeah. And David, what kind of what songs do you? I'm singing two songs from Oklahoma in it. I'm singing Oh, What a Beautiful Morning and Sir You With a French. And then I'm singing Don't Marry Me, I think, which is from Flower Drum Song. Yeah. So. Yeah, and as great. as well as singing, there's going to be great dancing too. I think we're we're going to dance a little number, <laughs> <laughs> and there's going to be other dancers in it. So it it will be a grand night for everything. <laughs> All things Rogers and Hammerstein. Oh yeah, I saw Oklahoma one time years ago, and, and it's the kind of music that that you just so ca you just keep singing it, don't you? Like it's even joyous. for weeks later, you know, you're yeah, still singing those songs. It stays with you all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We've done Oklahoma three times, so it'll be great to get to sing those songs again. Finally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Jennifer, if you look at, you've got such a diversity between all the three different shows. What do you like the best about A Grand Night for Singing? Mm. I think the arrangements. You know, you hear them so much in their original context, and they're, they're absolutely stunning. But now, listening to them, how we're actually going to sing them, and, and these, you know, maybe five, six-part harmonies that may have once been a solo, just to hear that massive sound coming out from everybody, I think is going to be the most exciting part. And just the slightest little tweaks and, and twerks that we've added to each song. Yeah. I think it's, Dr. Mike, I think it's tremendous because 
people go to shows, you know, to musicals, and they and there's you know two or three songs that they really love out of out of a show. But when you can combine those into one show, and, and somebody can go and listen to all these favorite songs, it must be really really something. Yeah, and and people will look at the at the list of songs in that show, and they'll say, I don't know that one. Where did that one come from? And so they're learning something about shows that may have not been done very much in in the last even 50 years and yet they get a little bit of an education because oh that's a great song i need to remember that yeah i tell you so what which song are you going to sing for us today jennifer it's called it might as well be spring it's originally from state fair and like dr mike was saying it's originally a ballad so it's very slow in the in the production of state fair but it's got some spice and pep to it and in this great voice production. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> thank you so we're really looking forward to this so would you mind singing that for us sure i would love to yeah. So Thank how long you. Have you been singing? Well, I was in my first community theater production of Annie when I was four, but I devote all my talent to Lise McRae yeah. <laughs> and my vocal teachers there. So, roughly maybe since '95. Yeah. So you majored at Lise McRae? Mm hmm. Yeah. Musical theater and dance. Yeah. So a great place to go to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very versatile. You you will learn all trades. You will learn how to build sets, how to build costumes. Mm -hmm musical theater history uh, you actually get a little TV and film so um, and then as well as performance yeah so really enjoyed it all those years, mm -hmm. years you were there mm -hmm. it's tremendous but fantastic singing well, thank Thanks you so much for singing that <laughs> thank for you us. very much and uh, that's going to be um, July 16th through July the 20th and mm -hmm. so uh, that's going to be a great show and, and looking forward to having that and you, we're going to talk some more about Kiss Me Kate here in a minute and you have to change for that I don't do. you? Yeah. And I so, do. Uh, but this uh, Grand Night for Singing was nominated for a Tony Award for Best Musical so it, that, I mean that's really something mm -hmm. to be nominated for yeah. Best Musical isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be fun. But thanks so much for singing and you're going to go make a costume change? I will. And we'll be back here in just a moment here to talk some more about Kiss Me Kate. Uh, the 30th annual Lisa McRae Summer Theater. <laughs> 